Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the latest on the Afghanistan exit. As President Biden says, he's committed to keeping U.S. troops in the country until every American is evacuated. Outside with live cam, I'm stealing a couple of words from Mike Osterhage's social media update this morning. Sultry and sizzle. That's sultry now, sizzle later. I'll talk to him in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday. It is August 19th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. I'm also going to copy something Mike put out there. He said the heat is on. It will be today and the weekend, right? No doubt about that. The question is, can we wrangle up a stray shower? A couple of days, uh, maybe tomorrow, Saturday, a stray shower, you know, one or two along the coast. But uh, rain is not going to be uh, one of those, unfortunately, headlines in the in the forecast the heat though yesterday we hit eight excuse me 89 98 for a high temperature here in town so that's the hottest day so far but then at the same time we had that huge thunderstorm that blew up on the uh, north side up around uh, Blanco, Kendall, Kamal counties. It became severe for a while there are a lot of pictures going to show you throughout the morning of folks that uh, took pictures of that great the beautiful uh, cloud formation. Obviously, it wasn't too beautiful if you're underneath that the severe thunderstorm yesterday. 81 right now, 81 Stinson, Pleasanton 82, and yep, the humidity is sky high. Now, the other problem yesterday we had was the humidity, while it dropped down somewhat, was still very high in the afternoon, so we had heat index readings about 106, 108. That was just here in town during the afternoon hours. Now, the humidity should drop off a little bit more, so it won't be quite as intensely hot when you step outside. Still, it's going to be blistering out there. Right now, the heat index is 89 it's uh, Stinson and 87 out there at the airport New Braunfels 88 mold is on the moderate side and again throughout the day temperatures are pretty much going to be staying steady with these clouds around here so upper 70s well above normal and then later on this afternoon a decent breeze but going for 97 again so most all of the summer or in at least the past month and a half we've had two days that were above normal then we got yesterday and now we're got today with above normal temperatures very very hot weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Here's a silver alert this morning. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is looking for a Patricia Bradford who is diagnosed with cognitive impairment. She is 78 years old, 5'5", weighs 156 pounds and has gray and black hair. She is wearing a multicolored shirt and possibly floral and beige pants. She was last seen at 2.30 yesterday afternoon in the 12,800 block of Sand Holly. She was driving a beige 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee with Texas license plate DXY2938. Law enforcement officials believe this senior citizen's disappearance poses a credible threat to their own health and safety. If you have any information regarding the missing senior citizen, you're asked to contact the Bear County Sheriff's Office at 210-335-6000. As local COVID cases rise, so does the strain on area hospitals. This morning, only 6% of staffed hospital beds are available. The amount of COVID patients continues to rise as well. 1,397 people are in the hospital with viruses, the virus. 373 are in intensive care. 230 are listed as being on ventilators. This morning, President Biden says he is prepared to keep U.S. troops in Kabul until every American is out. This statement coming as dangerous scenes play out near Kabul Airport. ABC's Julian McFarlane has the latest. In his first interview since the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan, President Biden defiant in the face of criticism over the handling of the U.S. withdrawal. The idea that the Taliban would take over was premised on the notion that the uh, somehow the 300,000 troops we had trained and equipped was going to just collapse. They were going to give up. I don't think anybody anticipated that. And while U.S. officials claim inside of the airport is secure, just outside the gates is a completely different picture as thousands of desperate Afghans try to leave. Members of the Taliban trying to control the crowds, firing shots over people's heads, beating men, women and children. We have Taliban permission. ABC's Ian Panel and his crew confronted by Taliban fighters, ignoring the accreditation issued by their own commanders, forcing the crew back to their cars. Stop filming, stop filming. We're foreigners. We've got an armoured vehicle. We can get out of here. But those people desperate to leave the country, they have to face that just to get through to the military side of the airport, even if they have permission to leave. 
As many as 15,000 Americans and at least 65,000 Afghans desperately trying to get out. But an email to U.S. nationals saying the United States government cannot ensure safe passage to the airport. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Wind-driven wildfires still raging in drought-stricken forests in the mountains of Northern California. That's after the fire incinerated hundreds of homes and has forced thousands of people to flee to safety. The newest inferno, the Caldor Fire, continues to grow in the Sierra Nevada, southwest of Lake Tahoe. In the Sierra Cascades region, the month-old Dixie fires expanded by thousands of acres to 993 square miles or about 635,000 acres. Hurricane Grace is pelting Mexico's Caribbean coast with heavy rain and strong winds, keeping tourists off the white sand beaches until it crosses the Yucatan Peninsula. The Category 1 storm has already soaked earthquake-damaged Haiti, Jamaica, and the Cayman Islands en route to a direct hit on the Riviera Maya, the heart of Mexico's tourism industry. Popular cruise ship destination Cozumel is also in the storm's path. Grace is expected to weaken slightly, then regain hurricane strength before making a second landfall in Mexico later. The woman who was in charge of the U.S. Capitol Police intelligence operations on January 6th is returning to that role after the insurrection by a mob of Trump supporters. Yogananda Pittman served briefly as acting chief. That's after Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sun abruptly resigned following the riot. The new chief, Tom Manger, was sworn in last month. Pittman's return as assistant chief of protective and intelligence operations comes despite criticism over the security breakdown on January 6th. Earlier this year, Pittman faced a vote of no confidence from an overwhelming majority of officers who participated in a union organized vote. And time now is 436 and it's about 81 degrees out there. Still ahead, if you're trying to be healthy and steam your food, we have some ways to make your meals taste just a little bit better. Also next, some changes for SAISD football plus San Antonio missions almost get another win. Almost outside with live cam, yes. Very steamy this morning out there. Very typical August weather now as we have reached the 19th of the month. You're watching GMSA just getting started. We still have two and a half hours of news, weather and traffic to come. SAISD was forced to cancel seven football scrimmages this week against non-district teams due to COVID numbers on the rise. SAISD will still hold scrimmages this weekend, but only against district schools. Athletics Director Brian Clancy says the reason is to limit exposure to students from other districts that are not following the same COVID protocols. He also said they have every intent to play their scheduled regular season games for all their sports. Not every SAISD student athlete is vaccinated against COVID, so as a precaution, the district is actively planning vaccine clinics to give those students that opportunity. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Amari Cooper joined his teammates on the field this week at the Star in Frisco. It's his first 2021 offseason practice. Back in early January, Cooper had ankle surgery, which caused him to miss minicamp, a practice time in Oxnard. He's now cleared to go and admits it was tough to be patient during his downtime. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it, it, you know, I just want to play football. I just, I just want to be healthy. Um, the challenging part is just wanting to be your best. Um, and when you hurt, you're obviously not 100%, so you're not your best. So, yeah, it's, it's been pretty challenging. Cooper said he feels like he's 100% and hopes to play Saturday night against the Houston Texans. The USL Championship says... Uh, uh, the scheduled match between San Antonio FC and the Monarchs on Saturday, August 21st at Toyota Field has been postponed. The game will be rescheduled to Wednesday, September 1st at 7.30 p.m. The decision was made after multiple individuals from San Antonio tested positive for COVID. All league as well as local and state health and wellness protocols are being followed. Now, submissions baseball. San Antonio almost got away with another win, almost. After trailing throughout most of the game, missions tried a late comeback against the Hooks, but their attempt fell short, and they dropped game two by a final score of 7-5. to five. Series continues tonight down in Corpus Christi. And time now is 442 and about 81 degrees out there. What if eating healthier could be as easy as steaming your food? Up next, we go over the options we have, or rather you have, with this cooking technique. 
Also up next, a first look at ABC News' George Stephanopoulos' exclusive interview with President Joe Biden regarding the recent crisis in Afghanistan. Welcome back. It's 445. President Biden tells ABC's George Stephanopoulos in an exclusive interview that he is committed to getting every American out of Afghanistan. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, George Stephanopoulos one-on-one -on -one with President Biden. Back in July, you said a Taliban takeover was highly unlikely. Was the intelligence wrong or did you downplay it? I think uh, there was no consensus. If you go back and look at the intelligence reports, they said that it was like more likely to be sometime by the end of the year. You didn't put a timeline out when you said it was highly unlikely. You just said flat out it's highly unlikely the Taliban would take over. Yeah. The idea that the Taliban would take over was premised on the notion that, the, uh, that somehow the 300,000 troops we had trained and equipped was going to just collapse. They were going to give up. I don't think anybody anticipated that. And coming up at 7 a.m., the only place to see the ABC News exclusive interview with President Biden is on Good Morning America. With your first look, I'm Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. Well, steaming your food is a great way to put a healthy plate on the table, and cleanup is super easy. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris has some ways to take steamed food from bland to bold. Ann Moffat Ryan is into healthy cooking and likes the versatility of steaming. I usually enjoy cooking chicken and fish and vegetables with steam. I was thinking yesterday that I hadn't done an artichoke in a really long time and I needed to do one. Steaming is a great way to cook without adding fat and calories, and it retains nutrients that could be lost when boiling. And you don't have to sacrifice flavor. Whether you use a steam basket, an electric cooker, or a bamboo steamer, here are five ways to take steaming from boring to savory. Instead of steaming with water, infuse with other liquids like broth or beer or wine, even flavored vinegars. Avoid thick liquids, though. They can burn. You can also flavor the liquid. Think lemon peel, dill, or garlic. You can steam seafood with white wine, onion, lemon juice, and herbs. A bit of sesame oil goes a long way, and chicken or potatoes can be flavored with rosemary or garlic. Spice your foods before steaming. Brush on the juices and pat the ground spices. Marinating before steaming adds flavor and tenderizes the meat. A mix of soy sauce, sesame oil, rice wine vinegar, and lemon juice for fish, or try carrots with olive oil and spices. Finally, try using parchment paper or foil to seal an envelope around food and create a steam in the oven. Thin cuts of seafood are ideal for cooking this way. Surround the fish with a little oil, some greens, veggies, and herbs that will build up steam while it's baking. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Looks pretty good. It does. I know it's healthy. Right now, all you'd have to do, though, is walk outside with those ingredients. and <laughs> It'll be done. Steam good. away. Steam bath outside. Steam yeah. away. Yeah, it was hot yesterday with those. I mean, temperature got up to 98. And again, we had a heat index about 106, 107 at that point. Hey, Mike, uh, so this KSAT Connect, Connect picture, I saw a weird glow in my front yard yesterday right around sunset. And I think I was looking at the same exact thunderstorm complex reflecting that uh, evening sun. Yeah, I mean, it, it, when you're not underneath one of these storms, they're absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful out there, but boy, that thing just blew up and it did become severe at one point last evening, about, uh, I think it was about eight o'clock or so. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, for the folks that were underneath that, it probably was not a very pretty picture, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous. We got more of these, uh, these pictures that folks took yesterday of that storm that blew up late yesterday and in the evening hours. All right, right now it is fairly quiet out there. We don't have anything as far as any precipitation um, going back to 12 hours and you can see these things just almost blew up out of nowhere, just popped up right there and they didn't come in here. They didn't move. They just popped up and then rained themselves out. And uh, the other problem, like we were talking about, was the fact that the humidity stayed so high in the afternoon. And we were all we were uh, texting back and forth with each other. Justin, Katie, Sarah and Adam yesterday afternoon. It's like, yeah, it hit 98 and that with those dew points that remain so high had the air dried out. We probably would have uh, gotten at least to 100 yesterday because it's easier to heat up dry air than moist air. Now we do get a bit of a break this afternoon because we should see the dew point temperatures drop down. We stayed up in the about low 70s yesterday afternoon, but we should get down in the 60s, so it won't be quite as oppressively humid. But 
still going to be very, very hot. So we're still going for some mid to upper uh, 90s for high temperatures. Humidity comes back in tomorrow morning, should drop down in the afternoon, and we'll do that cycle all over again. As far as any rain chances, pretty much doubt it today. I mean, there could be a stray shower way, way off to the uh, northwest. Other than that, computer models just really are not very encouraging as far as rain. Tomorrow afternoon um, and even in the morning hours, you know, we could see one or two of these sea breeze showers down here. One or two may try and scooch in a little bit further to the northwest, but that's pretty much going to be about it. And then Saturday, a little bit of, of a uh, disturbance pretty much caused from Hurricane Grace as it hits land, makes landfall over in Mexico or down in Mexico, I should say. Uh, it is going to perhaps throw a couple of extra clouds up in our our direction and give us one or two showers of thunderstorms, but the odds of that are very, very low. But once again, it is going to be making uh, landfall sometime tomorrow, or excuse me, Friday early as a maybe as a hurricane. So it's going to weaken once it goes over the Yucatan Peninsula and then regain a little bit of strength as it moves through the uh, Bay of Campeche and makes landfall well to the south of us. So no concern from that. But again, maybe one or two showers of thunderstorms on Saturday 90 at noon, partly sunny skies going to be another hot one today going for 97 for high temperature. Heat index is still going to be well up into the hundreds, probably not quite as high though as what it was yesterday. And we're just going to be staying on the hot side. A shower two tomorrow. One or two thunderstorms possible on Saturday. Don't get too excited about it, but otherwise it's going to be hot. It's going to be sunny. Another small chance of rain by the middle of next week. I was up at the San Marcos yesterday afternoon walking around in the heat of the day, and I realized, wow, this is such a huge change from what we had earlier this summer. Yeah. Yes, we almost need like an umbrella. Well, not for rain, but just for cover. Yeah, mm -hmm. at this shade. Because mm -hmm. again, my, my son was going to go ride his bike to work yesterday. He's like, no, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> yes. Because yes. when yeah. you're in the direct sun on a day like that, then add 15, 20 degrees on top of Oh, it. easily. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah. you're cooking from we, the sun. We could feel it, that's for sure. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 452, about 81 degrees. And still ahead, Falcon and Winter Soldier star Anthony Mackie getting his own Captain America movie, plus details on canceled Garth Brooks concerts. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 293, Fireball four. Your daily four numbers, 4859, Fireball three. Cash five, two, five, 10, 16, 22. Lotto Texas, 9, 27, 36, 39, 52, 54. And your Powerball numbers, 35, 36, 51, 55, 61. Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Good luck. Details on a new movie role for Sean Penn and his daughter. Plus, Garth Brooks is canceling concerts. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I love you, baby. You and me have the same heart. Sean Penn's new movie is a family affair. Flag Day stars Penn and his daughter Dylan as a father-daughter with a troubled relationship. It's a, a, a coming-of-age story where, where I'm the one coming of age. <laughs> Sean also directed the film, which is Dylan's first lead role, and she says it was a lot of pressure. I was just nervous to work with him in general in that capacity as a director and as my co-star. It just felt like... It felt overwhelming. Flag Day opens tomorrow in select theaters. Garth Brooks getting off the stage for 2021, officially canceling his remaining concert dates as COVID cases continue to rise across the country. He says in a statement that in July, when he resumed touring, he thought the pandemic was behind us. But now watching the new wave of infections, he realizes we're still in the fight and he must do his part. Where do we start? Anthony Mackie officially getting his own Captain America Marvel movie. He recently took over the role in the Disney Plus series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and there were reports of a movie in the works, but nothing official. No word yet on a timeline. And celebrating a birthday today, friend star Matthew Perry is 52, while Emmy winner Kira Sedgwick is 56. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.56, and it's about 80 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on COVID-19 booster shots and why some health experts say the booster shot will help keep the country ahead of the virus. Another Pokemon game set to hit smartphones very soon. If you still haven't caught them all, we'll have the details on when you can pre-register coming up in Tech Bites. Another smiling face has walked into the studio to join us on GMSA. That would be Steven Cavazos. He's got looking at the Transguy cameras right now. We'll get up to speed on the morning commute. We are just getting your Thursday started here on GMSA. Live from KSAT 12.
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, fire breaks out at an apartment complex on the city's north side overnight. The White House announces a rollout of a third COVID-19 booster shot. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting from Washington. Coming up, why health experts say it's a necessary step. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a humid 80 degrees to start your day, and we are looking forward to some heat today. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, the 19th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, I enjoyed the cloud cover earlier in the week, but yesterday, uh, not that much luck with that. It was a sultry scorcher out there. Mike Ostrey, just more on that. Does this trend continue for the rest of the week, Mike? Yes, temperatures are going to be mid uh, upper 90s. Uh, yesterday we did hit 98 degrees. Two numbers that were definitely of note. 98, the hottest that we've been in San Antonio officially so far this year. The previous was 97 on August 1st. All also, yesterday's low temperature stayed at 79, which tied the record for the warmest low temperature that was set in 2014 and then just a couple of years ago. This morning we are at 80 and dew points at 75. So in other words, yeah, you walk outside and it is warm and sultry and humid and everything else going for 97 for a high temperature today. So once again, we will be just a degree or so above normal should get somewhat of a break in the humidity later on today. That was the big problem. Also, I mean, 98 degrees and the humidity still stayed up. We had uh, heat index readings about 106, 107 or so in the uh, just the sizzling part of the afternoon, right when the oven was turned up on broil. The aquifer went down six tenths of a foot on yesterday's reading and mold is moderate. That should continue to drop down. Pigweed, just a little bit of that showing up. All right, as far as the rest of today, well, we got warm and humid this morning with mostly cloudy conditions. And then this afternoon, it is going to be partly cloudy and hot again. Again, getting up to 97, so a degree or so above normal in the average temperature. That trend will continue tomorrow. It's it's still going to be hot. I think we may just, uh, you know, we'll stay right around mid upper 90s. A shower is possible tomorrow. Don't get really excited about that, but uh, primarily on the sea breeze, one or two of those showers. Then we go into the weekend and a thunderstorm or two is possible on Saturday and primarily to the uh, south and east, about a 20% chance of rain and then just hot on Sunday. It looks like it's going to be staying hot to start off next week as well. Perhaps another chance of rain about midweek of next week. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Hey, good morning, Mike. So far, so good. Uh, taking a look here at US 90 at 36. Looks like we're off to a pretty good start here at this shot from Trans Guide. Let's go ahead and take a closer look right now. Uh, I did go ahead and see. I did see some flashing lights out there. Uh, not sure if they're there anymore, but either way, looking pretty busy right now. But thankfully, no big issues out on the roadways. Uh, but construction to be on the lookout for. That's just right wrapped up here is off Loop 410 northbound at Marbach Road. This has been ongoing since August 15th. They're doing some bridge work there in both directions, uh, but that should be wrapping up by August 29th. This is an overnight deal, so just use some caution if you're an overnight commuter or early morning riser like us here at GMSA. Uh, do you have a stalled vehicle still reported here off I-37 northbound at I-10 eastbound? Uh, saw a few stalls as we came into the station this morning, but thankfully those have since cleared out and those drivers have received some assistance. And right now things are looking pretty green on your screen. If you take a look right now, now at our maps and our surrounding areas. Uh, not a lot going on at this hour, but if you recall and you were with us yesterday throughout the show, things started off quiet and then they got quite busy as we wrapped up the show. So let's hope it stays pretty quiet right now, but the inbound times are looking really good. If you're going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments from I-10 and Bernie, 25 minutes at this hour and coming in from 281 and Bulverde, we got 26 minutes and 26 as well from 35 and New Braunfels. One last look here at Trans Guide at US 90 at 36. Things are shaping up to look pretty good so far, but we're watching things closely. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a fire overnight forced the evacuations of several apartment units on the city's north side. Happened around 1.30 this morning at the Jackson Apartments in the 2500 block of Jackson Keller Road. Firefighters say they arrived to find fire in the bathroom of an apartment. A woman and her dog got out safely. The surrounding apartments were evacuated as a precaution. The incident commander says the fire was contained to the bathroom. Investigators are still trying to figure out how it started. 504, the White House announcing a rollout of a third booster shot for Americans over the age of 18. The decision comes after new data produced by the CDC. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with more. This morning, a new weapon against the coronavirus. We are planning for America's, Americans to receive booster shots. 
starting next month to maximize vaccine-induced protection. Pending FDA approval, the free shots will be made available starting September 20th. Show your vaccination card and you'll get a booster. All fully vaccinated Americans ages 18 and up are urged to get a third booster shot eight months after receiving their second Moderna or Pfizer dose. No guidance yet for those who received Johnson & Johnson's single shot vaccine. Dr. Fauci telling CNN. You want to stay ahead of the game. All right. And that's why the decision was to boost people. This comes as the CDC releases new data showing reduced protection against mild and moderate COVID illness in vaccinated adults over time. Getting a booster mRNA shot dramatically increases the number of antibodies, strengthening one's protection against the virus. It will help us end the pandemic faster. As the Delta variant maintains its grip, the U.S. case average now surging to more than 128,000 new daily cases. Hospitalizations are now at their highest point in over six months. In Alabama, ICU beds are overflowing. We have opened our third COVID unit. Our hospitalizations are going up, the cases are going up, and the deaths are going up. This as mask mandates continue to be a point of contention. President Biden warning legal action against governors who block schools on mask policies. The Paris, Texas school district found a loophole in Governor Abbott's ban on mask mandates by adding mask requirements to the dress code. Based upon where we stand on the law and what the governor has done so far, we're acting consistent with the law. President Biden also announcing a vaccine mandate for nursing home staff. If disobeyed, the facility could risk losing federal funding. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Bear County deputies here at home are investigating after they found a man and a teen dead in a house last night. Now, it happened at home in the 25,000 block of Enchanted Don. That's on the northwest side of the county. Late yesterday, family members asked the sheriff's department to make a welfare check. The victims have been identified as a man in his 40s and a boy in his mid-teens. Sheriff Javier Salazar says while the incident is investigated, being investigated as a homicide, he didn't rule out that it could be a murder-suicide. We found at least one firearm in the home. At this point, we believe that they were shot. Both victims were shot. Salazar would not say what the relationship was between the two victims. He said the incident was isolated and there is no threat to that neighborhood. And this morning, Bear County deputies looking for a man. They say attacked two people before taking his own child by force. This case released a photo. 41 year old Tory Stewart. The sheriff says there are four warrants out for his arrest. Best case, believe Stewart is armed and they're asking anyone with information about him to call Crime Stoppers at 224-STOP. And time now is 5.07. It's about 80 degrees out there. Still ahead, how Samsung is making it easier for people to show proof of their COVID-19 vaccination. Plus, how a local career training program is making a difference in the lives of people impacted financially by COVID-19. And we'll take any little tweak to the upcoming forecast. It's hot, it's humid, we know that. We'll check in with Mike as we get closer to the end of the work week. You're watching GMSA. Now 511, a tax-funded career training program here in San Antonio is making a difference in the lives of people impacted financially by COVID-19. A local single mom got her GED and is currently working through a bookkeeping course through to restore her education. She feels like she's been given a second chance. Confidence, um, knowing that I can study and I can learn and you can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> This mom is one of the success stories the city of San Antonio wants taxpayers to hear about when they see what Train for Jobs SA has done. The one-year program drew in more than 6,000 people, but so far has helped about half of that. 2,000 people are enrolled in training. Another 1,000 have completed training. The true impact um, is going to be on the individual families and individual community members who benefit from this, and they see their family situation change. Uh, for the better uh, because they participated within the program. And so far, 584 people are looking for jobs and 434 are employed. More than 2,000 people received stipends. Training for Jobs SA will end in December, and that's when the Ready to Work program will launch, which is a voter-approved training program. You can read more about this story and the programs on ksat.com. Now 512, still about 80 degrees. And still ahead, Pinterest is adding new search filters that will allow some users to view different hair textures. And a new Pokemon app is coming to Android and iPhone. We'll tell you when you can pre-register.
Why hide your skin if Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. Hide my skin? Not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixent, you can show more with less eczema. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes, or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. 516, Samsung making it easier for Galaxy phone users to show proof of their COVID-19 vaccination. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, storing COVID vaccination proof in your Samsung phone. The tech giant is partnering with a free app called Common Health. Now, once you download the app and your status is authenticated, you can add your vaccine record to Samsung Pay where it will be secure. And there's a new feature on Pinterest that lets you filter hair searches by texture. It's called Hair Pattern, and the goal is to make hair content more accessible for people of color. Users can click the filter that best matches their hair type to view what's best suited for them. Finally, Pokemon Unite is coming to iOS and Android devices. The 5 vs 5 battle game was released last month, but for the Nintendo Switch, and starting September 22nd, you'll be able to play on your cell phone or mobile device. Free registration is open now, so go catch them all. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. If you have to head out the door at 530, you have less than 15 minutes. Yeah, but it's not looking too bad out there, at least right now, Stephen Tavassos. Yep, I think that's pretty right. Uh, we're taking a look here. A few of the shots from TransGuide. It does show things are looking really good right now. If you're going to be heading out in the next few moments, Loop 410 at Marbach. Uh, some construction out there earlier has since wrapped up and the road is open. Looking a little bit busier there off US 90 at 36, but some parts, of course, that we're seeing here at TransGuide does show pretty quiet, smooth uh, start so far. But let's go ahead and take a look here. At our map, still have this stall reported here of I-37 northbound at I-10 eastbound. Uh, check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. We've been seeing a few stalls uh, since the morning started, but just use some caution out there. Uh, construction to be on the lookout for it as we're going to inch closer to the weekend. This one's still been ongoing since yesterday, but uh, some roadway repairs happening out towards State Highway 123 near Guadalupe County. It's going to lead to a full closure of both lanes from three miles north of FM 1681 to Zion Hill Road. Again, that's been ongoing since yesterday, but should be wrapping up by uh, uh, Friday, August 27th. That's going to be another week from tomorrow. Just keep that in mind. But eight in the morning to seven in the evening. We also have some more construction happening out here towards US 87. It's going to be the demolition of a bridge near Seguin. A uh, full closure of the main lanes in both directions out towards uh, State Highway 46 to the scenic loop road. Uh, that will be going on throughout the weekend, August 20th, but should be wrapping up by Monday, August 23rd. This is an overnight deal, eight in the evening to five in the morning. So something to keep on your radar. Uh, let's take a look at our map. So looks like a crash just popped up there from that shot at US 90. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at that coming up here on GMSA. But for now, these shots at Transguide do show a good smooth start so far. That's good news for a Thursday morning. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. If you've uh, ever wanted to send in one of the pictures like Mike's about to show you, you could do it on the Weather Authority app. Very bottom, just click on pins. And the other night, yeah, it's very easy to do. And then you can select, you can either take a picture or you can uh, select from your, your camera roll on your phone. Um, also, it's an easy way to check the radar because yesterday, of course, we didn't really have much of anything. And then all of a sudden, these couple of thunderstorms just almost blew up out of nowhere. And it did produce some severe weather. It's a beautiful picture. And take note, spectacular lightning. Yes, it was beautiful to see. Ended our family bike ride early. Even though you are not underneath that storm. If you can see lightning, if you can hear thunder, you are in really danger. So you need to just stay inside or go back inside. Even though a, a storm, it may be sunny where you are and you're looking at a storm off in the distance, you can still be in danger with the uh, the lightning. So you always want to play it safe. All right, clouds around this morning and yep, it is warm. It is humid. We're at 80 right now. Since an 81 degrees, Pleasanton 82 and with the humidity in 
boy, these, this was the problem yesterday, really. The humidity didn't drop off a whole lot. It did reduce somewhat in the afternoon, but we still had way up there. So those heat index readings were about uh, 106, 107, and that was just at uh, the airport. It was even higher down to the uh, south and southeast. It feels like 89 in Pleasanton, 88 Stinson right now, as well as Canyon Lake. So yesterday did get up to 98 degrees. We started off at 79 yesterday, as you heard me mention off the top of this half hour, which was tied the record for the highest low temperature, the warmest low temperature yesterday's date. And today going for 97, still some triple digits around here and going to be mid and upper 90s all around the metropolitan area. But again, we will have the heat index readings probably not quite as high as yesterday. We will see some a bit more of a drop in the humidity in the afternoon, but we're still going to have these heat index readings well up into the hundreds and then approaching 105 or higher than that. There's no uh, formal heat advisory, but the Weather Service just put out the statement talking about the excessive of heat index readings uh, pretty much for San Antonio and down to the south and to the southeast later on today. So even though there's nothing formal posted as far as a heat advisory, obviously you have to take it easy. Lots and lots of water and lots and lots of shade because again, all the numbers we talk about are in the shade. You get out in the sun, you're not just feeling the, the air temperature, but the sun's heating you up as well. So it can be pretty tough out there. Just take it easy. All right, as far as rain today, maybe something off to the north and northwest. That's pretty much about it F tomorrow. I think there could be one or two sea breeze showers out there. That'll be about it. Saturday, a slightly better chance for one or two showers. But again, this is that computer model that usually kind of, you know, slaps on just broad brush as far as rain chances, and it's not even very aggressive as far as any rain chances. Sunday going into Monday, Tuesday, and then by Wednesday, we will have a slightly better chance for a couple of showers around here. Obviously still about a week away, but at, that is encouraging today. Very hot, 90 at noon, partly sunny skies, and we are going to be up to 97 with those heat index readings in the hundreds. And yeah, just take it easy. It's going to be almost almost overwhelmingly hot. You know, you step outside, you walk across the parking lot to the grocery store. It's just like, wow, and a couple of showers here and there. That's what I can say on TV as well. Uh, Saturday, 20% uh, chance for a storm or two, and we're going to be saying mid and upper 90s through the weekend. This is the time of year where you see the squirrels out and about, and they hit the sidewalk, and they're like, hot, 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 hot. hot. Not for us, yeah, I know. They just lay there going, no, never mind. So, <laughs> oh, why, and, and, where they kind of spread out yeah. and find a cool spot? In the and shade, yes. Wa fresh water. And for the pets if they're oh, outside. Yeah. So. Yes, definitely. Yeah, Including your pet squirrel if you have one. Aww. 522, about 80 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Anthony Mackie gets ready to play Cap on screen. Plus, the Fast and Furious franchise just keeps going. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, nine, three, Fireball four. Daily four, four, eight, five, nine, Fireball three. Cash five, two, five, ten, sixteen, twenty-two. And a lot of Texas, nine, twenty-seven, thirty-six, thirty-nine, fifty-two, fifty-four. And your Powerball numbers, 35, 36, 51, 55, 61, Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Good luck. Big movie and music news today. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. It feels like it belongs to someone else. Not anymore. Anthony Mackie donned the Captain America mantle in this year's The Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. Now it appears he'll continue the role on the big screen. Multiple outlets are reporting Mackie will star in the next Captain America movie, with Falcon and the Winter Soldier creator Malcolm Spellman co-writing the movie's script. The next Fast and Furious movie, number 10 in the series, has a release date, April 7, 2023. Justin Lin, who's directed five of the first nine Fast films, is set to return for numbers 10 and 11, expected to be the final films in the franchise. Garth Brooks has canceled the final five stops on his stadium tour due to the resurgence of COVID-19. Brooks restarted the tour in July as society began to reopen, but now says in a statement, I realize we are still in the fight and I must do my part. Ticket holders for the canceled shows will get automatic refunds, all 350,000 of them. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Back to Anthony Mackie for a second. I saw a movie on cable the other day that I forgot he was in. Wait. He was with Eminem in Eight Mile. What? Do you remember that? I didn't know that was mm -hmm. him. I'll also, have to look that up. Also became a household name when the movie Hurt Locker came out and watched, won a bunch of Academy Awards. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I guess 
I associate with Marvel. Yep. Well. And now he is Cap. Yeah. 527, about 80 degrees. And still ahead on GNSA. Extreme weather from coast to coast. We're going to have the latest on fires in the west and flooding in the east. Not feeling well? There's an app for that? Of course there is. We'll tell you about a new app that says it can use your info to predict when you may actually be getting sick. Speaking of getting sick, you know what can always make you feel better? An awesome pet. Our friends from the San Antonio Humane Society will be standing by. San Antonio kids have been heading back to class, including some of our own. Ahead on GMSA, we'll go back to school with one of our KSAT kids. Making headlines this morning, big wildfire problems continue in the western U.S. while flooding poses a threat for people out east. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a humid start to your day. But you know, somehow even though it's 80 degrees, I feel like it's not as humid as yesterday morning, but maybe it's just because I'm getting used to it. What do you think? Uh, it's possible. Possible. Well, I know we're spending a lot of time in the AC. Ah, that is true. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is the 19th. The Micah uh, described it earlier as sultry out there. Yeah. yeah, I have to agree with you, Steph. I, it just See? didn't seem quite as like, you know, hit by a brick when you walked outside this morning. So. I agree. Yeah. I mean, still warm and humid out there, but uh, an 80 is roughly five degrees above the, the normal low temperature. Dew points at 75, which is uh, roughly where it was at this time yesterday. We've got a breeze out of the south at 11 miles per hour. Put those two numbers together, mix it all up, and it feels like 85 right now, 88 Canyon Lake, 88 in Stinson, and boy, the prize winner this morning is down around Pleasanton at 89 degrees. Wasn't it just a handful of mornings ago we started off in the low 70s at one point? Ah, oh, just a fond memory. Anyway, it's going to be staying hot. We did hit 98 yesterday, the hottest day so far officially at the airport. Mold is moderate. Uh, pigweed is on the low side. We're going to be up there again today, 90 at noon and going for 97 today. Still, we're going to have some very high heat index readings well up into the hundreds from pretty much San Antonio down to the southeast. Now, yesterday, the big problem was the fact that the humidity while it dropped a little bit, we still had a bunch of it out there. So we had those heat index readings here in town about 106, 107 in the, you know, the, the hottest part of the afternoon. It's not going to be quite that uh, hot and humid today. Still, it's going to be, you know, you got to take it easy if you're outside and it's going to be staying pretty hot through the weekend. Any rain chances, anything to squeeze out? We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything yet, sir? Uh, well, we do have some flashing lights out here. Mike, taking a look at Transguide, uh, appears we do have a stall vehicle out there of loop 410. Uh, driver could possibly be receiving some assistance from one of those Texot hero trucks we'd like to remind you about. Uh, but just check out this shot there. We do have some road flares. Uh, we want drivers to be aware of again when you see those flashing lights move over, move over and slow down because this driver is receiving some assistance again from possibly one of those Texot hero trucks. Taking a look at the map road right now, it's being reported off loop 410 westbound right at Fredericksburg Road. Uh, so we know right now not any issues as you can see on the map. The westbound lanes are looking really good right now at 410. But again, you caution out there. We still do have a stalled vehicle reported off I-37 northbound at I-10 eastbound, not causing any issues, but stalls seem to be the trending issue that we're spotting this Thursday morning. And jumping to the wider look at the map here, uh, we told you about a crash that's reported off US-90. That's near General McMullen. Actually, uh, just check the fire page right now. There's multiple fire units out there for a possible structure fire. I believe we have a crew heading out there to the scene to investigate, but right now we're going to take a look at our inbound times. Uh, things are looking pretty good so far, as you can see, coming into the downtown San Antonio area pretty green from Seguin I-10. We got 29 minutes right now and coming in from Lavernia 22 minutes on 87 and 28 minutes on 37 coming in from Floridasville. So overall pretty smooth start so far on the roadways. Just a few of those stalled vehicles to watch out for. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Natalie, breaking news. There's a water rescue going on right now on the far southeast side of town, not far from Bronick Lake. The rescue is actually taking place in the San Antonio River near Interstate 37 and Loop 1604. First responders are trying to get to a man who is stuck along the banks. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, we understand this involves both a police helicopter and a fire department boat. Yeah, we have seen all of that out here. As a matter of fact, they were right here up until a few minutes ago. We were told that they were going to try to go further down lake, uh, downstream to try to get to that man because they weren't having any success here. Now, let me give you a look at the video. This has been going on for at least since two o'clock this morning. Police told me that uh, there was a group of men who came out here. Uh, two of them wandered away, started wading in the river and fishing. 
Now, at some point, the rest of the group realized these two had not come back and became worried. One of the men eventually did show up again, saying that that last person was caught along the banks, that he was exhausted and not able to travel any further. So well, at that point, that is when they called in first responders. That man is still on the banks of the river, as far as we know. And police say that he has just some minor scratches on his feet, but otherwise, otherwise is OK, just too tired to make it out on his own. Now, they've been out here again since about 2 o'clock this morning trying to get to him. Uh, they, we understand he's in an area that is not easy to, uh, not easily accessible, and that's the, that is the cause of the problem. And again, they were here up until just a few minutes ago, took the operation further downstream to try to see if they could get to him. But again, they say that that man appears to be okay. Reporting live on the far southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for the update. Other stories this morning from coast to coast, people are facing extreme weather this morning. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, there's more to come. Fire in the west, flooding in the east, a record-breaking summer with more than a month still left. There are 104 large fires burning across the country, mostly in the west, where drought conditions continue to fuel the raging wildfires. Firefighters call the Northern California Caldor Fire unprecedented after it nearly doubled in size Tuesday night. Thousands have been evacuated from their homes. Many have lost their homes altogether. I don't know. Right now, I just feel like giving up. And the Dixie Fire is still burning, too. It's torn through more than 660,000 acres, and still, containment remains stagnant. On the East Coast, flooding after Tropical Depression Fred from Georgia to North Carolina. And it happened so fast, the next thing I know, it was, it was coming in for the floorboard. Tearing apart homes, and now the fear, it's done the same to families. Dozens of people are still unaccounted for. We have been searching abandoned vehicles, homes, buildings for survivors, and we'll continue to search. And now it looks like the Northeast could be in for heavy rain and wind, too. Some forecast models show Tropical Storm Henri headed that way, potentially reaching hurricane strength as early as the end of the day. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The FAA says U.S. air carriers can fly over Afghanistan or help with evacuation flights if they get Defense Department permission. Agency says crews landing at Hamid Karzai International Airport can do so at their own risk. They have to use visual flight rules due to a lack of air traffic control. Some airlines seem more intent on avoiding Afghanistan than landing in Taliban-controlled territory. Three carriers just announced they are changing routes to fly around it. The Environmental Protection Agency says it is banning the use of a widely used pesticide on food. It's called chlorpyrifos, and the agency says it is, quote, associated with potential neurological effects in children. The EPA's move reverses a Trump-era decision not to ban the substance. Previously, the government allowed for so-called tolerances that designate an amount of a pesticide that is allowed on food. The ban revokes those tolerances. Right now it's 538, about 80 degrees. And still ahead, Disney is ditching its popular Fast Pass program for a new paid service. We're going to tell you how much it's going to cost you to skip the line. Aha, uh -huh, I see what they did there. Up next, details on a popular smartphone app that says it can predict when you might be getting sick. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at 80 degrees. We're expected to hit the 90s, high 90s today. We'll be right back. Our smartphones track so many things about us, like our locations, the heart rate, even our oxygen levels. A new app says it can use that information to predict when we may be getting sick. And during this pandemic, that's never been more important. Ursula Perry reports and tells us how it works. Movement means freedom to occupational therapist Mary Cunningham. She loves to walk her dog Kobe, but a life threatening condition that causes her to develop blood clots often brings everything to a stop. So I've been to the ICU three times with quite a, the stay, like multiple days. A friend suggested Mary test out the app Sick Predict. Sick Predict monitors health metrics from an iPhone, like heart rate and oxygen levels, to tell you when you might be getting sick. A one means you're doing great. One night, Mary saw a 10. 
but we caught it early, so I avoided the ER, which was great, and I avoided the ICU. Patients that can deteriorate really quickly and their health can go so bad so quickly, having this application can definitely uh, help us be on top of the problems earlier. Primary care doctor Alicia Rodriguez Jorge uses her wearable device to track her health and says while it doesn't replace her, it can help get patients to her sooner. Sick Predict CEO Joshua Salman and his business partner developed this app with research from Stanford and Harvard. There are many illnesses where we're seeing tremendous success. Um, the flu, COVID, uh, norovirus, um, pulmonary or lung issues, some cardiac issues. And for patients like Mary Cunningham, a heads up on her changing health can prevent hospitalization or even worse. And I don't have to always feel like I'm a ticking time bomb. App wearables like Fitbit and other smart watches are also being developed at major institutions like Harvard and Stanford. Researchers do stress that this data does not replace a doctor, but it can help get patients to a doctor sooner and even help make them take better care of themselves too. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. And again, if you caught the tail end of that report, the app is called Sick Predict. It's a good one to have right now. Time is 5.43 and 80 degrees out there. Up next, our friends at the San Antonio Humane Society are standing by with a furry friend that needs a new home. Well, it is puppy time, and Kim is here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Oh, my God. Can that be smaller and more lovely? I know. So this little sweet chihuahua, her name is Lola. She is just like a couple months old, if that. She's going to be small. I mean, you can yeah. take a look at, take a look at her little size. She's not going to get much bigger than this. Um, she likes to cuddle, likes to be up in your, up in your space, up here with your neck, and on your lap. So she's just a great little lap dog. Oh yeah, and and at this age, then it's going to be, you know. Wake up in the middle of the night yes. um, and just kind of rock them back to yes. sleep. Just like yes. a little baby. Just like a baby. <laughs> just like any kind of a baby. Yes. So. Yep. Very playful. Likes to chew. I was in there this morning with her and she was just chewing on my little toes. And I was like, okay, all right, you're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> and of course, that's why if you get a puppy, make sure you have plenty right. for them to chew on. So yes. they don't, they end up don't chew on your, on your shoes, shoes and furniture and everything. Exactly. Lots Anything of toys. Anything going on special over there? Yes. So we need volunteers and volunteers to help out with cleaning the kennels, um, with our medical team, all of those those kind of things we are definitely in need of volunteers okay. so. and don't forget kids you can get volunteer hours too. exactly exactly yes you can come with your parents you can get volunteer hours all of this is on our website at sahumane.org slash volunteers all right and if you need more information give them a call they are out there at uh, Fredericksburg Road just outside Correct. 410 4804 Fredericksburg Road thank you very much dear. thank you Lola, so cute. In your morning consumer headlines, Disney announced its new Genie service for those who visit Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts this fall. The free service will be built into Disney Parks established apps along with a paid version called Disney Genie Plus. That allows guests to access the Lightning Lane for $15. Lightning Lane is basically a paid version of Disney's Fast Pass that used to be free for guests. The Disney Genie allows guests to create their own itinerary and receive recommendations for attractions entertainment and dining. The app also provides information on wait times for rides. Old Navy will no longer separate its plus size women's clothing from other sizes. The chain is getting rid of its separate plus size sections in 1200 stores and online. Said the company says starting Friday will offer all of its women's apparel together from sizes 0 to 30. Prices will not change across the sizes. Even the store's mannequins will highlight the change. Old Navy says its mannequins will now be able to fit clothing sizes 4 to 18. And let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I saw some flashing lights out there. Yeah, we saw these flashing lights, a stalled vehicle out there of Loop 410. You can see that driver still receiving some assistance from one of those Texod Hero trucks. We do have some flares out there indicating that there's a possible lane closure as well. But uh, right now, uh, traffic is moving pretty smoothly through that area. Uh, taking you to the maps right now, the TxDOT is reporting that the stall is off Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road. However, another stall listed on their page just moments ago shows a separate stall off Loop 410 
eastbound at Babcock Road. We are checking with our friends at Transguide, working to clarify where that stall is. It could be in both directions or this could just be one stall, uh, but we are working to get that clarified. Either way, make sure you're using caution driving through Loop 410 and check those vehicles because we are seeing those stalls still reported here off I-37 northbound at I-10 eastbound, not causing any delays right now. It is still early enough to where traffic is really light, but use some caution when you're heading out there this morning. The map is pretty green on your screen, as you can see right here. Uh, not seeing any delays anywhere within Loop 410 or even around 1604 at this hour. 35 looks pretty good as well if you're going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area, but uh, we are going to be watching out for this stall and work to give you those updates as they become available. Guys? Thank you, Stephen. There was one big complex out there last night right around sunset, and Mike says it was very electrical. Yeah, the, these... About two different uh, cells developed, and the one of them, though, a lot of folks were taking a picture of this thing, and it did become severe about, uh, I think it was 8 o'clock last night. A lot of cloud-to-ground lightning and a lot of cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning, as you can see. And, yeah, I love it when the uh, lightning goes sideways, but... I know it's, it's kind of fun to watch if you're not underneath that storm, but stay inside if there's ever any thunderstorms in the area. You don't want to go outside because it is dangerous. If you, if you can see lightning, if you can hear thunder, you are definitely in, in danger. So you want to be careful when there's those thunderstorms out there. Uh, this morning, no problems, no visibility problems, no uh, showers or anything uh, are showing up, but it is very warm and humid. Here's the uh, satellite picture going back 12 hours, and you can see there were a couple of those cells up here in Kamau County and then heading up in toward uh, San Marcos, Hayes County, and then that cell right there in uh, Kendall County, and that thing just those just blew up. They were just basically sitting in one spot, and then once the uh, sun went down and we lost the heating in the afternoon, they tended to uh, die down. All right, we've got a lot of humidity around here this morning and it will be dropping down somewhat later on this afternoon, so it won't be quite as high with the heat index readings. We're still going to have a lot of heat index readings, especially from San Antonio down to the south and to the southeast, well up into the hundreds and even approaching 105 or higher than that. But it's not going to be quite as high as yesterday because that was the big problem and we hit temperatures 98 for a high and at that time we still had dew points well up into the 70s and that's why we were seeing heat index readings about 106 107 here in town yesterday so we will start to go through that daily cycle a little bit more uh, pronounced and so therefore we will have lower humidity readings in the afternoons and that's going to be the case tomorrow as well. Quick check on the uh, tropics. Of course, Grace did become a hurricane. It is now just about to has made landfall right there in the Yucatan. So it is going to lose some strength, then come back into the Bay of uh, Campeche and probably regain hurricane strength just barely before it makes landfall and it's going to be well down to the south. Now, as this does on Saturday, it may help throw a few more clouds in our direction way way on the north side of that and that is going to well, hopefully touch off a couple of showers and thunderstorms around here but other than that we're not going to see much of anything in the the brunt of uh, grace is going to be staying well down to the south of us this weekend so forecast today we're going to be very hot and very humid again 90 partly sunny skies at noon and 97 for a high temperature heat index into the hundreds not white as high heat index as yesterday, but still it is going to be a sizzler out there. And the problem is we haven't had this, you know, extended heat this summer, really. And so we got to get used to it now because temperatures are going to be staying in the mid and upper 90s through the weekend into the first part of next week. Couple of showers here or there, maybe Friday, Saturday, and then down the road it looks like a, another chance of rain by Wednesday. No, we just got an official alert from AP that Grace has just made landfall. OK, thank you. Uh -oh. Welcome. Right now it's 553, about 80 degrees. Let's look at your winning lot numbers. We have pick three, two, nine, three, fireball four, daily four, four, eight, five, nine, fireball three. Cash five numbers, two, five, ten, 1622, Lotto, Texas, nine, 27, 36, 39, 52, 54. And if you're just now waking up, I'll do this one more quietly. 35, 36, 51, 55, 61, Powerball 26, power play two. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, our exclusive interview with President Joe Biden. He's sitting down there with George Stephanopoulos, his first since the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban. With chaos and fear now ruling the streets of Kabul, was the plan an intelligence failure from the start? The president is pressed on how we're going to get Americans and Afghan allies out of there safely. And we're right there in Kabul. 
AM panel has been there the whole time where the streets are tense and tens of thousands are desperate to leave. We'll have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Right now on KSAT.com, catch up on this week's edition of If These Walls Could Talk. Trina Weber visited the Greater Faith Institutional Church to speak with a woman who helped bring one mural to life. Rosa Wilson worked with a local artist to create a mural honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. That story available online right now. Glad you're with us this morning. In the next hour, GMSA, we have details on an overnight police chase on San Antonio's north side. And staying on the north side, cleanup underway at an apartment complex following an early morning fire. We will have the very latest. And Stephen will be back with traffic. Mike has your forecast. You're watching GMSA. One more hour to come after this break. The White House announces a rollout of a third COVID-19 booster shot. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting from Washington. Coming up, why health experts say it's a necessary step. This morning, fire crews trying to figure out what sparked an overnight fire at this north side apartment complex. We'll have some details. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, there's a nice shot out there. Uh, we're starting at 80 degrees. It got pretty hot yesterday, and we're looking at the mid to upper 90s again today. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Well, as we like to say, rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is August 19th. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it got really hot yesterday. I think Mike said it might have been, you know, one of the hottest days we've had in a long time. Mike, did you not say the heat index was like 142 or something like yeah. that? Uh, if you're outside, it definitely felt like it. At one point in the afternoon, at the hottest point in the afternoon, the heat index was about 106, yeah. 107 out there at the airport. Temperature was the at 98 degrees, so that was the hottest so far officially out there at the airport. And then we started off yesterday at 79. So that tied a record for the warmest low temperature. Two years ago, we hit 79 degrees yesterday's date and then back on uh, 2014. And this morning we are starting off. Yeah, it's warm and humid out there again. As a matter of fact, heat index right now, 88 Pleasanton, 85 at the airport, as well as Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, and 86 is what it feels like right now in Castroville. Uh, mold is moderate. Pigweed is on the low side. And uh, throughout the day, temperatures really aren't going much of anywhere. We may, you know, when it's all said and done, fluctuate a couple of degrees here and there. We should have a nice breeze out of the southeast, but that's just going to continue to, you know, keep us on the, the humid side. Although it does look like the humidity is not going to be quite as high as what it was yesterday afternoon. So yes, we will still have high heat index readings, especially San Antonio down to the southeast. And uh, the Weather Service has put out the statement talking about the excessive heat index. So it's going to feel like it's well up into the low hundreds, 97 for a high temperature later on today. As far as rain chances, doubt it at all today. Maybe one or two of them tomorrow or Saturday. But uh, other than that, it's definitely back to summer. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Hey, pretty quiet right now, Mike. Uh, good news if you're going to be heading out in the next few moments, especially at this hour. We know we tend to see a lot more people on the roadways uh, getting to their destination on time. But uh, right now, things are looking pretty good. 281 at San Pedro does show that, yes, we do have a few more folks getting their morning started early with us. So things to be on the lookout for. Let's get to our maps. Uh, right now, we did talk about this stall that was reported here off Loop 410 westbound. Now, I did check with our friends at TransGuide. TxDOT did report two separate stalls out of those eastbound and westbound lanes of 410. Uh, but it turns out it is just that one stall that was out there at Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road, and that has since cleared. So good news for that driver out there, but still have this stall here off I-37 northbound at I-10 eastbound. It's been there all morning long. Uh, use caution if you see that stalled vehicle out there and another one right here off State Highway 151 westbound at South Callahan Road. So it's been the morning of stalls. So while things are picking up, things are slowing down for others out on the roadways. Be sure to check those vehicles before you get your morning started. Uh, taking a look at these inbound times, though, things are still looking pretty green if you're going to be coming to the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton, 28 minutes on 37 right now. Not going to take too long there. 17 minutes coming in from Lido with little time on 35. And right now we're looking at 18 minutes coming in from Highway 90 and Castroville. So thankfully those issues that we've been seeing out there are pretty minor so far, but some construction to be on the lookout for. We have all those updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Steve. Right now, we want to get a little breaking news. Crews are on the scene of a water rescue in the far southeast side, not far from Bronick Lake. The rescue is actually taking place in the San Antonio River near Interstate 37 and Loop 1604. First responders are trying to get to a man who is stuck along the banks. Katrina Weber is staying on top of the story. Katrina, what can you tell us about what's happening out there? 
Well, I just spoke with a police sergeant and he tells me there's good news that the rescuers have reached that man, but now they're having some trouble themselves trying to get out of the water. It seems that this is not an easily accessible area. And then they're also dealing with a pretty strong current. Now, behind me, you can see this is one of the other boats that they've had here. They've also uh, had a helicopter up in the air. We have some video to show you. This has been going on since about 2 o'clock this morning. However, the man, we understand, has been out there since late last night. Police say he was with a group who had gone to the river. A couple of them got away from the group. They were wading in the water and fishing, and this man was one of those, too. His friend at some point came back later saying that this man was in trouble. He was exhausted, not able to get out of the area. And so that is where this rescue started. Now, uh, they have been uh, in the water, I said, uh, getting to that man. They did get to him. It's just a matter now of trying to get him out of that area. He was on the banks of the river, and uh, they tell us that they're going to have to go onto some private property to be able to get him out of that area. So it is quite possible that we will not see him come out. But police tell us that he's OK. He had just a few minor scratches on his feet uh, after this all night ordeal. Reporting live on the far southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, an overnight fire forces the evacuations of several apartment units on the city's north side. It's all happened around 1.30 this morning at the Jackson Apartments in the 2500 block of Jackson Keller. That's where firefighters say a fire started in a bathroom of one of the apartments. A woman and her dog were able to make it out safely. No one else was hurt, but the surrounding apartments were evacuated as precaution. The incident commander tells us the fire was put out pretty quickly. We're no word yet on what sparked the blaze. Questions remain after Bear County deputies found a man and a teen dead in a home on the northwest side of the county. The discovery was made in the 25,000 block of Enchanted Dawn. That's where Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says they found a man in his 40s and a boy in his mid-teens dead inside. Sheriff Salazar says the incident is being investigated as a homicide. We found at least one firearm in the home. At this point, we believe that they were shot. Both victims were shot. While Sheriff Salazar would not say what the relationship was between the two victims, he did say the teen did not live at that house and may have been a runaway. COVID cases are on the rise here in Bear County. So is the strain on our hospitals. This morning, only 6% of staffed beds are still available. 1,397 people with the virus are in our local hospitals. 373 are in ICU. 230 are listed on ventilators. The White House announcing the rollout of a third booster shot for Americans over the age of 18. The decision coming after new data produced by the CDC. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with more. This morning, a new weapon against the coronavirus. We are planning for America's, Americans to receive booster shots starting next month to maximize vaccine-induced protection. Pending FDA approval, the free shots will be made available starting September 20th. Show your vaccination card and you'll get a booster. All fully vaccinated Americans ages 18 and up are urged to get a third booster shot eight months after receiving their second Moderna or Pfizer dose. No guidance yet for those who received Johnson & Johnson's single shot vaccine. Dr. Fauci telling CNN. You want to stay ahead of the game. All right. And that's why the decision was to boost people. This comes as the CDC releases new data showing reduced protection against mild and moderate COVID illness in vaccinated adults over time. Getting a booster mRNA shot dramatically increases the number of antibodies, strengthening one's protection against the virus. It will help us end the pandemic faster. As the Delta variant maintains its grip, the U.S. case average now surging to more than 128,000 new daily cases. Hospitalizations are now at their highest point in over six months. In Alabama, ICU beds are overflowing. We have opened our third COVID unit. Our hospitalizations are going up, the cases are going up, and the deaths are going up. This as mask mandates continue to be a point of contention. President Biden warning legal action against governors who block schools on mask policies. The Paris, Texas school district found a loophole in Governor Abbott's ban on mask mandates by adding mask requirements to the dress code. Based upon where we stand on the law and what the governor has done so far, we're acting consistent with the law. President Biden also announcing a vaccine mandate for nursing home staff. If disobeyed, the facility could risk losing federal funding. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. 
The FAA says U.S. carriers can fly over Afghanistan or help with evacuation flights if they get Defense Department permission. The agency says crews landing at Ahmed Karzai International Airport do so at their own risk. They have to use visual flight rules due to a lack of air traffic control. Some airlines seem more intent on avoiding Afghanistan than landing in the Taliban-controlled country. Three carriers just announced they're changing routes to fly around it. Well, just about 15 minutes ago, Hurricane Grace made landfall pelting Mexico's Caribbean coast with heavy rainfall and strong winds, keeping tourists off the beaches until it crosses over the Yucatan Peninsula. The Category 1 storm has already soaked earthquake damage Haiti, Jamaica, and the Caymans en route to a direct hit on Riviera Maya, the heart of Mexico's tourism industry. Popular cruise ship destination Cozumel, also in the storm's path, Grace expected to weaken slightly, then regain hurricane strength before making a second landfall in Mexico later. And time now is 610 and it's about 80 degrees out there. The missions of the Coastal Bend all week taking on the hooks. We've got a recap of last night's game. And we're going to tell you how the rising number of COVID cases is impacting a local high school football team as they get ready for the new season. A number of teams and outside with live cam right now very salty out there super humid and we had a few storms pop up late in the day again yesterday into sunset last night we'll check back in with mike and talk about our chance of a stray shower or storm coming up Time for a look at morning sports. San Antonio Independent School District was forced to cancel seven football scrimmages this week against non-district opponents due to COVID cases on the rise. SAISD will still hold scrims this week, but only against district schools. Athletic Director Brian Clancy says the reason for that is to limit exposure to students from other districts that are not following the same COVID protocols. He also said they have every intent to play their regular season schedule for all their sports. Not every SAISD student athlete is vaccinated against COVID according to the district. So as a precaution, they are actively planning vaccine clinics to give those students that opportunity. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. On to pro football, Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Jamar, uh, Amari Cooper joined his team on the field this week at the Star up in Frisco near Dallas. It's his first 2021 offseason practice. Back in early January, Cooper had ankle surgery, which caused him to miss minicamp and practice time over in Oxnard. He's cleared to go and admits it was tough to be patient during his downtime. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it, it, you know, I just want to play football. I just... I just want to be healthy. Um, I, it, the challenging part is just wanting to be your best. Um, and when you hurt, you obviously not 100%, so you're not your best. So, yeah, it's, it's been pretty challenging. But Cooper says he feels like he's now at 100% and hopes to play Saturday night against the Houston Texans. Now to Missions Baseball. San Antonio almost got another win last night, almost after trailing throughout most of the game. Missions tried a late comeback against the Hooks, but their attempt fell short. They dropped game two by a final score of seven to five. Good news, I'll have another chance to get back into the win column when the series continues tonight down at Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi. Good luck, guys. Good luck. And time now is about 6.15. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I was looking at some of the cameras. Looks like things are moving for the most part. Pick it up. It's definitely doing that here off Loop 410 at Broadway. You can see that, yeah, we're getting a little bit busier now that the morning's getting started here, inching closer to that morning rush hour. A little quiet there off Loop 410 at Marbach where we did have some construction to talk about. Uh, actually bringing you here to the map. That construction has since wrapped up, but it's been ongoing uh, since last week. They're doing some bridge repairs there. Again, just as a reminder, it's overnight. If you drive through that area of Loop 410 at Marbach Road for those bridge, bridge repairs, it's going to be going on until the 29th. So something to be on the lookout for there. Uh, other construction to talk about right now, now that the morning is still a little bit quiet, some roadway repairs that will be taking place up until Monday, August or Friday, that is August 27th. It's happening out at State Highway 123 near Guadalupe County. Uh, it's going to lead to a full closure in both directions of three miles of FM 1681 over to Zion Hill Road. Again, that's been ongoing since yesterday, but should be wrapping up by Friday, August 27th. Uh, as we're inching closer to the weekend, a demolition of the US 87 bridge is something to be on the lookout for uh, for our friends in Seguin. It's going to lead to a full closure of those main lanes in both directions there, and it's going to be from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road, and that will be taking place this weekend. That's starting tomorrow, August 20th, up until August 23rd. That's a Monday, so it will be taking place throughout the weekend. 
weekend, but should be wrapping up by five in the morning. So another overnight deal to be on the lookout for. Roads are pretty good right now, though. Uh, Mike's got a look at your forecast. How are things looking? Very hot, very humid. It <laughs> is a humid morning. I'll tell you what, make sure the air conditioning is working all day long and it's going to be get workout. Temperatures are right around 80 right now, but we are maybe fluctuating a, a degree or two with mostly cloudy conditions. And then it's going to be another sizzler. Yesterday we hit 98, the hottest out at the airport so far this summer. Today, going for 97, partly cloudy skies. Humidity is still going to be there, but shouldn't be quite as high. I want this, hope this video will play here. Um, is it going to? Oh, darn it. Let me try this very quickly. It was great video of the... It's not going to do it for me. Shoot. I love our Wi-Fi in here. Anyway, um, we've got a lot of clouds around here. It was video of that huge thunderstorm yesterday that blew up just to the uh, the north of San Antonio and a lot of folks are taking pictures of it. It did become severe at one point. Now, as far as any rain chances today, pretty much completely out of the picture. Uh, perhaps a couple of breaks in the clouds out there. All right, looking ahead, and this is the uh, Climate Prediction Center for the next six to 10 days, and this is uh, the odds of seeing above normal temperatures. So there is a small chance that we will be slightly on the above normal side as far as temperatures around here, which is kind of uh, well par for the course right now after having that uh, below normal for the past couple of months. And there is a either normal chance for precipitation or slightly uh, above normal chance for some precipitation. And this is going in through again the 25th through the 29th. Then take this into the next couple of days or the first couple of days, I should say, of September and still a slight chance for above normal temperatures. However, then the last couple of days of August and first couple of days of September, there is a kind of a little bit above normal chance for some precipitation around here. So it does look like long range computer models that we are going to be seeing some rain coming in here by the very, very end of August, at least long range models. Short range, nothing out there. Um, and this is the one that usually kind of paints things in with a broad brush. One or two showers are going to be possible tomorrow, maybe on Saturday, but that'll be few and far between. Same thing Monday, Tuesday. We get into Wednesday, though, and we do have a somewhat better chance for a couple of uh, showers around here and maybe even extending into Thursday. I wouldn't get too excited for it right now. It's still a week away. Obviously, a lot can change. This high pressure is going to continue to build on in here. That's going to keep Grace pushed well down to the south of us, but as it builds in, that's going to help to keep temperatures on the hot side, suppress really any uh, showers from trying to form up around here and that's going to be the case going in through the first part of next week but then by the middle of the week it's going to move off just enough and we can get some little waves little disturbances trying to move on in here and that's what's going to give us that chance for some rain maybe by the middle of next week but today it's pretty much just going to be hot it's very humid this morning 90 at noon and then we'll have a high temperature up to 97 yes it will feel like the low hundreds but the heat index shouldn't be quite as high as yesterday we will see the humidity drop off slightly more than what it did yesterday because yesterday it just stayed just brutally humid in the afternoon. Uh, we stay very warm temperatures mid and upper 90s really through the forecast period. Um, a shower thunderstorm on Saturday is possible and then maybe by the middle part of next week. I'm glad there's a chance next week given though it's small. Yeah, but given the fact we've been spoiled this summer, that was tough to take yesterday with 98. It was very yeah, hot. Same mm. to that. Thank you, Mike. 620, about 80 degrees. And get your pencils and your backpack ready. After the break, we're heading back to school with one of our own KSET kids. Gillette Pro Glide. Five blades and a pivoting flex ball designed to get virtually every hair on the first stroke. So you're ready for the day with a fresh face for a fresh start. For a limited time, get a fifth cartridge free. Got a little things to do in this world. I love myself. If you feel like you're chugging all day long, start sipping for a change. Try Lipton Herbal Ice Tea and naturally caffeine-free flavors that won't rush you through your day or night. Lipton. Stop chugging. Start sipping. Right now at Macy's, dust yourself off and get back in there. With great deals on jeans. And classic tees. Plus, get an extra 20% off at Macy's. Oh, oh, What's going on? Oh, let me help. Oh, let oh, me push. Oh, push. Oh, there, it's up there. Hey, Josh. Wrinkles send the wrong message. Help prevent them with Downy Wrinkle Guard. Feel the difference with Downy. 
624, lots of kiddos in the Alamo City are back in class. More districts are starting next week. In this morning's Case at Kids segment, first grader Anna Foster shows us how to get ready for a successful day at school. Hi, I'm Anna Foster, and I'm going to show you the best, best way to get ready for school. Wait. Where did my homework go? Really, Bo? My homework? Good. Now it's time to get dressed. Now it's time to get ready. See, and now let's just get your backpack and you put it on and now it's time to go get feet. It's important to have a healthy breakfast. Now we're all ready for school for Kate at Kids. I'm a Foster Bye. I'm on a Foster Bye. <laughs> Have a great first oh day. I believe she starts Monday. And uh, the cute little kiddo in the closet, that's her little brother. Little brother, Aww. yeah. The scene stealer there. Good to build a routine. <laughs> Those waffles and fresh fruit look yeah, awesome. Yeah, that look good, especially mm -hmm. right now at 626. Indeed, yeah, right hint, now. Hint. <laughs> 626, about 80 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. Extreme weather from coast to coast. Fires in the west and flooding in the east. We're going to have the latest. Police and firefighters spend the morning on the San Antonio River after a man gets into trouble in the water. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. He has been rescued. I'll tell you more about what happened. And a woman leads officers on an overnight chase on the city's north side. We're going to have the details. And outside with live cam, we had dangerous heat indices yesterday. We had a severe few thunderstorms out there yesterday evening and this morning. A few leftover clouds as the sun is coming up over San Antonio. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday the 19th. Hi, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, grab that cup of coffee and prepare for the heat. Uh, yesterday got really hot. It was very steamy out there, and we assume more of the same today? Yep, 98 degrees yesterday, the hottest uh, so far this year out at the mm -hmm. airport. It felt every bit of it. Well, and the problem was, because usually we see the, the humidity drop off a little bit more in the afternoon, but we still had really high humidity in the afternoon, so therefore the uh, heat index at one point was about 106 out there at the airport, and so you know a lot of folks we're seeing it close to, to 110. We should see a bit more of a drop in the humidity today, not bone dry air, but it's not going to be quite as high with the heat index. Still want to be careful when you're outside. A couple of breaks in the clouds right now and really not much going on. Kind of the uh, the usual start you'd see, except for the fact that temperatures are about five degrees above normal right now. And yep, we've got a uh, fair amount of humidity out there. Wind is out of the southeast and all that's doing is just continuing to pull in all that humidity. So it feels like 88 Pleasanton. That's the heat index right now. 85 Canyon Lake at the airport and 86 at Stinson. Moderate amount of mold, a little bit of pigweed. Update accounts going to be coming out in about about, uh, say half hour to an hour. So very warm, very humid this morning and partly cloudy. It's going to be hot I'm going for 97 for a high temperature today. Of course, we are now on the, the downslope as far as the average high temperature, which is 96 degrees. And yes, the heat index is going to be up around the, uh, the low hundreds. Still hot tomorrow. I've got a mention of a shark. Don't get really excited about rain chances. Just one or two of them, especially down there along the coastal plain on Saturday. A storm or two is possible, maybe a 20% chance for some rain, and then it's just going to remain very hot over the weekend. Any more rain down the road or any more hot, hot temperatures? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on out there? Flashing lights right now here off 35 at Division Avenue. You can see there uh, right after this shot at Transcape, we do have a driver that is receiving some assistance. Uh, TxDOT has reported a stalled vehicle out there, and from the looks of it, it looks like it could be some sort of semi 
there or some utility truck there, but use some caution driving through that area. This is 35 North right at Malone Avenue, but uh, not causing any issues right now. The maps are looking pretty green as you can see here right now based off of what we're seeing at this hour. Uh, not any issues or slowdowns that we're spotting on the maps on 410 or 1604. The drive time is looking pretty good, and if you're going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area here in the next few moments, we got some good news for you coming in from uh, Bernie on I 10. It's 25 minutes at this hour. 25 goes for 281 and Bolverde in just 26 minutes right now coming in from uh, uh, New Braunfels and 35 southbound. So it is getting closer to that morning rush hour. A lot more folks out on the roadways right now. Just use caution because we have been spotting a lot of these stalled vehicles out there, but we're watching the roads closely and we'll keep you posted guys. Thank you, Stephen. A man who got in trouble in the waters of the San Antonio River overnight is finally on his way to dry land. After more than three hours of trying, rescuers have finally reached him. Katrina Weber is live where the rescue effort had been going on near Interstate 37 and Loop 1604. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that the struggle isn't quite over yet. Well, that's right. Uh, uh, rescuers have the man on their boat or raft right now, but they're, the problem is they've been trying to find a place to get out of the water. It's not an easily accessible area, and so there's real no, really no exit point for a vessel. So that's what they've been trying to do. But we understand that they have found a place on private land where they're going to do that and then bring the man back out onto dry land. Right now we have police on standby. It seems that they are keeping guard over this other boat that the fire department had brought here to use uh, in this rescue effort. This had been going on since about two o'clock this morning, but we understand that the man was among a group who had gone into the water late last night. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see what had been going on. Now, uh, they tell us that th this man and another had wandered away from the group. They were wading and fishing in the river, and at some point they got lost. Uh, the man uh, then tried to make his way to 1604, but he wasn't wearing any shoes and he suffered some cuts on his feet, according to police. His friend at some point wandered back to the, the rest of the group and they were relieved to find that out, but he was able to direct the rescuers to exactly where his friend was. And again, uh, not an easily accessible area, so they had some trouble, quite a bit of trouble trying to just get to the man, but we understand they do have him now with them, and they're just it's just a matter now of getting out of the water. Uh, in addition to the police, we also have some of that man's family on hand. They are very relieved to know that he's safe, but also tired because they've been up all night. So uh, the waiting game uh, continues for them as they wait for him to come back here after his all-night ordeal. Reporting live on the far southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, an overnight police chase on the city's north side ends with a crash near the airport. This began this morning around 115 in the 1800 block of Northwest Military Highway. That's where Castle Hills police say a woman was sitting in her vehicle behind a building parked. When officers approached her, she took off, leading them on the chase. It ended when she crashed into a fence near the airport. Officers say her vehicle got stuck in the fence and crews had to take her out through the passenger side door. She was arrested at the scene. This morning, Bear County deputies are looking for a man who they say attacked two people before taking his own child by force. The man on your screen is 41 year old Tory Stewart. Bear County Sheriff says there are four warrants out for his arrest. Investigators believe Stewart is armed and they're asking anyone with information about him to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen. That's 210-224-STOP. The push to get more people vaccinated facing added pressure. While health officials have said the data shows the vaccine keeps people protected against COVID, three recent studies found protection wanes over time against symptomatic infection. That's why President Biden says booster shots will be made available to Americans within a certain time frame. The plan is to offer every adult a booster shot eight months after receiving their second shot of Moderna or Pfizer. This booster shot set to roll out September 20th, pending FDA authorization. The time to lay out a plan for COVID-19 boosters is now. It will be easy. Just show your vaccination card and you'll get a booster. No other ID, no insurance, no state residency requirement. People with weakened immune systems have already begun receiving booster shots. Officials say boosters will also likely be needed for those who got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, but more data is expected on that in the coming weeks before a decision is made. This morning, President Biden says he's prepared to keep U.S. troops in Kabul until every American is out. That statement coming as dangerous scenes play out near Kabul International Airport. ABC's Julia McFarland has latest. 
In his first interview since the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan, President Biden defiant in the face of criticism over the handling of the U.S. withdrawal. The idea that the Taliban would take over was premised on the notion that the uh, that somehow the 300,000 troops we had trained and equipped was going to just collapse. They were going to give up. I don't think anybody anticipated that. And while U.S. officials claim inside of the airport is secure, just outside the gates is a completely different picture as thousands of desperate Afghans try to leave. Members of the Taliban trying to control the crowds, firing shots over people's heads, beating men, women and children. We have Taliban permission. ABC's Ian Panel and his crew confronted by Taliban fighters, ignoring the accreditation issued by their own commanders, forcing the crew back to their cars. Stop filming, stop filming. We're foreigners. We've got an armoured vehicle. We can get out of here. But those people, desperate to leave the country, they have to face that just to get through to the military side of the airport, even if they have permission to leave. As many as 15,000 Americans and at least 65,000 Afghans desperately trying to get out. But an email to U.S. nationals saying the United States government cannot ensure safe passage to the airport. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Any morning headlines, extreme weather from coast to coast. Fire in the west, flooding in the east. Large wildfires are burning where drought conditions continue to fuel the raging wildfires. Firefighters call the Northern California Caldor Fire unprecedented after it nearly doubled in size Tuesday night. And on the East Coast, flooding after Tropical Depression Fred, homes torn apart from North Carolina to Georgia, and dozens of people are still unaccounted for. We have been searching abandoned vehicles, homes, buildings for survivors, and we'll continue to search. The northeast could be in for heavy rain as well. Some forecast models show Tropical Storm Henry headed that way. Time check, just about 640, 80 degrees. And how often do you drink? Alcohol sales have gone up over the course of the pandemic. And while you may not be an alcoholic, there's another term that might describe you. Details just ahead. And welcome back. It is about 6.43 now. If you feel the need to drink more and more, you're not alone. According to the CDC, more Americans are using alcohol to cope with stress. Our RJ Marquez takes a closer look at what it means to be a so-called gray area drinker. A couple of glasses of wine on Monday, a few beers on Wednesday, Friday night, date night. How often do you drink? Like a glass of wine a night. Beer, always, like, beer, like, like pretty much beer, always. Sorry. If you find yourself between light social drinking and the classic signs of alcoholism, you might be what's known as a gray area drinker. The CDC says women who drink four or more drinks during a single occasion and men who have five or more drinks during a single occasion fall into this category. If you feel concerned about drinking, but you can never quit permanently, use alcohol to cope with problems, and can't spend time with your family or friends without taking a sip, you are a gray area drinker. Fix your drinking habits by establishing personal goals and analyze how alcohol interferes with them. Also, if you crave a drink, wait 15 minutes. Distract yourself and see if after a short amount of time, the need for a drink goes away. If you do need a drink, make one that looks fancy, but don't put alcohol in it. Sometimes a little downtime with a mocktail is all that's needed, not the alcohol itself. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service has a free confidential helpline available. If you or a loved one need any help, call 1-800-662-HELP or contact Alcoholics Anonymous. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Time check, 644. And there looks like there's a situation out there at I-35 and Division. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. You know, stalled vehicles seem to be the real big issue right now, Mark and Steph. Taking a look here, 35 and Division does show that a driver is receiving some assistance from possibly one of those Texas Hero crews. Uh, now, you can see there the road flares do show that uh, one of the shoulder lane appears to be blocked right now as a driver does receive assistance. But taking a closer look at the map there, uh, we are seeing a little bit of slowdown there off 16, but uh, it's actually we'll get to that in just a moment. But there is a stalled vehicle off Loop 410 eastbound at Palo Alto uh, getting over to that stall that we were just saw there on trans guide. It's out here off I 35 northbound right at Malone Avenue. So as you just saw stalls seem to be again that trending issue that we've been seeing throughout the morning right now, but thankfully nothing else big to report. Uh, there have not been any crashes right now, which is really good. If you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments, we know that morning traffic should be picking up here in just about the next few moments. So right now, good time to head out the door, but watch out for these flashing lights there as drivers do receive some assistance and check those vehicles.
All right, thank you, Stephen. I mentioned uh, at the top of this half hour that there were some severe storms in the area last night. Yeah, look at that picture. Yeah, a couple of a uh, couple of cells that just blew up, and we got some video of this one. And just watch it as those lightning flashes in there. Yeah, it was pretty to look at. Obviously, not too pretty if you were underneath that thing. But again, can't emphasize enough with these. Uh, if there's any lightning in the area, you just want to make sure you stay inside but yeah it was quite a light show and it did become they just they just sort of blew up and sat there for a while oh thank you appreciate that all right uh thank you very much for the ksat connect video we've got uh, you know it's funny we had some clear skies earlier now the clouds have started to fill back in kind of like what it did yesterday we are going to be seeing <clears throat> excuse me um, sort of mixture of sunshine and clouds today, probably leaning more toward the sunnier side later on. Yesterday, you know, we had a handful of clouds out there, but still got up to 98 in town, pleasant to 99, and then a lot of triple digits, of course, down to the uh, south and southwest. We're going to be in the same neighborhood again today with temperatures a degree or a couple of degrees above normal and a lot of mid and upper 90s. Still a few areas may stay uh, in the lower 90s and of course we've got the heat index to deal with and the heat index readings even though they will be not quite as high as yesterday because we'll see somewhat of a drop in the humidity in the afternoon still uh, got to emphasize these readings that are going to be in the hundreds approaching 105 pleasant and even higher than that and again these numbers are in the shade so if you're in the direct sun add 15 20 degrees to what it actually feels like because your body's getting heated up so you definitely lots of water lots of shade and make sure the kids do drink lots and lots of water just all day long, basically, not just when they're outside. As far as rain chances, you know, this is that computer model that's usually pretty generous with kind of the broad brush sweeping around the area. Not even on Saturday. There may be one or two of them on Saturday, a couple of showers or a thunderstorm, especially along the coastal plain, but even going into uh, the first part of next week. By late Tuesday and then Wednesday, there is a slightly, right now, a slightly better chance for a couple of these uh, showers and even a few thunderstorms to pop up around the area. But again, that's still a week off. At least it's something it's kind of encouraging. 90 at noon today, partly sunny skies and then a high temperature going to make it up to going for 97. Slightly lower humidity, but still we'll have those heat index readings getting well up into the, uh, the low hundreds later on today. And then tomorrow, a shower or two is possible along the coastal plain. Don't get really excited about that. Same thing on Saturday, just one or two of those thunderstorms out there. Temperatures are going to remain well into the mid and even upper 90s. And that's going to be the case through the first part of next week. And then we hold out hope for one or two more showers or thunderstorm by the middle part of next week. Well, it was quite a light show last night. Oh, wow. I, did, I, I was already in bed, but <laughs> uh, yeah, the video and the pictures that we got from everybody that saw that. Well, I live up in Northern Bear County and my windows kind of faced uh, north, northeast and it was flashing right in the window last night. Yeah, they were about right at dusk. There were about two or three cells that mm -hmm. popped up right up there in Kendall County and then uh, Kamau County. All right, keep those KSAT Connect picks yep. coming. Yeah, we enjoy them. Time now is 648 and about 80 degrees out there. The recent IPCC report on climate change wasn't good news. It basically says we can expect more severe weather if we keep warming the globe. I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA, what this means for Texans and what we can do about it. Outside with live cam, thanks for starting your Thursday with us here on GMSA. We're going to take another look at traffic coming up after the break. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, our exclusive interview with President Joe Biden. He's sitting down there with George Stephanopoulos, his first since the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban. With chaos and fear now ruling the streets of Kabul, was the plan an intelligence failure from the start? The president is pressed on how we're going to get Americans and Afghan allies out of there safely. And we're right there in Kabul. Ian Panel has been there the whole time where the streets are tense and tens of thousands are desperate to leave. We'll have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. It has been a long night for one man and for rescuers who are trying to reach him in the San Antonio River. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber on the far southeast side. This has all been going on near Loop 1604 and Interstate 37. That's where the man had gotten into trouble in the water. The police tell us he was with a group who had gone to the river late last night. That man and another uh, wandered away from the group. They were wading and fishing in the water. At some point, the group noticed they had not made it back. 
They got alarmed and called authorities. Now, the man's friend who was with him actually made his way back to the group and was able then to direct rescuers to where this man was. He was injured. He had some minor cuts on his feet and he was exhausted, according to police, not able to get out on his own. So rescuers spent more than three hours trying to get to him. This area not very accessible. They used a helicopter. They had boats and other equipment. They finally did get to him, and we understand that getting them out of the water or getting themselves out of the water has been a challenge because, again, not a whole lot of exit and entrance points on this river for them to get a boat out. So that is what they have been trying to do for the last hour or so. Reporting from the far southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, everyone. Uh, taking a look at Transguide, have some flashing lights still out there at 35 at Division. You can see that we do have a stalled vehicle out there. Driver receiving some assistance, but been there for about a little bit over in half an hour or so. Uh, just use caution driving through that area. Again, that's off I-35 northbound right at Malone Avenue. Those stalls seem to have been the issue this morning. Still seeing this stall here off Loop 410 eastbound at Palo Alto Road with a little bit of a delay there. So again, use caution, move over and slow down when you do see those flashing lights out there on the roadway. And a quick uh, reminder here, want to make a correction to some uh, bridge demolition that's going to actually be taking place in Bernie uh, starting tomorrow. That's August 20th up until Monday. That's going to be the demolition of the US 87 bridge. We're going to have more on that uh, coming up tomorrow on GMSA and give you all those updates as we get ready for that big demo. But Mike, what's the weather looking like? Oh, pretty hot and humid. We've got our clouds hanging around here this morning. A few breaks here and there and uh, temperatures. It feels like 85 degrees right now and 87 down the road in Pleasanton, 85 Canyon Lake. We are going to be seeing some very warm conditions once again today, 90 at noon. Yesterday we hit 97, the hottest so far this season, this year, I should say, out there at the airport. Going to be up to 97 today. Good breeze out of the southeast, southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. The heat index is going to be about, oh, say, low hundreds. Now, maybe not quite as high as yesterday, but still, you want to definitely take it easy, especially down to the south and to the southeast of town, where heat index readings are going to be about 105 to 110. Uh, a shower or two the next couple of days, uh, you really don't get your hopes up too high for that. And still temperatures are going to stay in the mid to upper 90s all the way through the weekend. Then we do have another small shot of rain as it looks right now by the middle part of next week. But, you know, we haven't been used to this. And so you hit 98 yesterday and wow. It was, wow. We could really tell tell yesterday. Yeah, in it was a change. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, thank you very much. Yeah. Good Morning America is coming up next. And we'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day.